Hello, welcome back to Molon Lave Wargaming. This is the setup for the December 27th, 1941 turn. Where we left off, uh, we had tracked down the Enterprise and Lexington to Timor, uh, over on the east side of the island. Um, they were at the extreme end of our Kate range. Um, so we managed to get a bunch of Kates on them, carrying bombs instead of torpedoes. Um, officially, we haven't finish them off, although Intel believes the Enterprise has gone down. In any case, last time we were there, both carriers were still afloat and burning, um, and each ship had suffered a secondary explosion of some sort. In the case of the Enterprise, it was an ammunition storage explosion on Christmas Day, uh, and then Lexington suffered an aviation fuel explosion on the 26th. Um, Highly doubtful that either ship is going to make it, but we'll be continuing to pursue them today. Um, so let's just get right into the setup then. Um, over here in China, I've dispatched another small task force of patrol craft to try to deal with these Hong Kong escapees. Um, and this formation of destroyers and torpedo boats is continuing to pursue them. Um, in the river delta over here by Hong Kong, um, I've ordered this unit to retreat, although I don't have all that much hope that they're going to be able to without suffering another attack. Um, all bomber aircraft here at Canton are being ordered to attack that army unit to try to cover that retreat. Um, there was another uh, ground unit that was in Hong Kong that had been ordered into that hex. I've aborted that move because that's just going to be throwing, um, you know, it's 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 a sunk cost. It's not like we're going to get back the troops that we lost there. Um, we're approaching Wenchow basically from all three sides of this T intersection here in the four-way intersection in the road. Uh, so Wenchow is probably just a few days from going down. Um, my first bit of reinforcements have arrived in Wuchang. Um, this brigade should arrive in another day or two. Um, so it looks like we're going to get away with the situation in Wuchang. That's looking pretty good. Um, and then just continuing to make attacks um, towards the road to Xi'an and in the Pao Tao area. To try to deal with the bomber situation here in Kwantan, I've actually moved a bomber squadron into Kwantan from Kotabaru. Um, so the, the hope is that these lilies are going to pull escorts from Kwantan. Um, so ba basically they're, they're picking up escorts locally instead of on the way. Um, I sent the detachment of zeros back to Kotabaru. Uh, so once again, instead of the Nels picking up escorts on the way, um, they now have both zero detachments available locally to provide escorts. Hopefully that works a little bit better. Um, I'd move more Sallies down, but I mean we just don't have enough aviation support here. Even with, with just the Willies, we're already over. Uh, so then that moves us to the Banda Sea. Um, basically what I'm going to have done here is the mini KB is going to form up and follow Carrier Division 2 as Carrier Division 2 moves west, basically straight towards the area where the carriers would have to evacuate. So I mean, they're hiding here right now. Um, they're really going to have to go east, or I guess they could go south. Um, but they seem to be going mostly or mostly west so far, not east. Um, so we're going to park alongside their track, um, and then we'll have a surface covering force immediately to the flank of the carriers, um, trying to head off these enemy cruisers in case they try to get a surface intercept. Um, between the baby KB, um, which has a heavy cruiser with it, and then... Carrier Division 2, which has two battleships and a light cruiser, uh, should be a fairly powerful fleet as far as getting into any direct engagements. Um, and that said, pretty much every enemy cruiser at this point has either been shot up by a battleship or bombed. 
Um, so the threat is relatively low, um, but we're still going to keep our surface ships flanking um, just to provide that little bit of extra security. Ampen has been captured, and this is going to be a new airbase for me. Um, unfortunately, we've really wrecked up the place um, while we were capturing it. Um, this base is in major need of repair and major need of supply. Uh, so the first thing before I start sending an air HQ or anything like that over here is I'm going to be sending construction engineers over to clean up the damage. So they're going to be on their way first. Um, in the meantime, the um, air HQ at Babel is going to stay put and they'll um, continue to service the uh, the Bettys from there. Um, yeah, and the Bettys do pretty well from there in terms of in terms of search area and effective range. Um, at Kagan, I've ordered an attack just because the, the enemy unit here, despite seemingly having greater numbers and a higher AV, um, they're just not fighting all that well, uh, so I'm willing to chance it. Uh, we've got an amphibious assault just about to land on Batangas. Uh, Batangas is under very close recon, and we can see that there are no ships left uh, here anymore. So that is what it is. We're not going to catch any ships there. Um, I have ordered the units at uh, Cabantuan to go ahead and proceed into Manila. I don't see any reason to wait any further. Um, Manila does not appear to have a whole lot of defenders, which is part of the reason I want to go in now. Um, that said, I've shifted my recon targets from Batangas to Manila, since Batangas is no longer really relevant. Um, and we'll be looking to see if the number of troops at Manila comes up tomorrow um, based on those reconnaissance sweeps. And I'll reassess whether I want my troops moving or maybe if they should continue to rest a little bit. Um, the Air HQ situation out here, I figured out a remedy to this. Um, this whole time I've kept another Air HQ in Takao uh, to service these Bettys and Nels that are here. Um, but really the only targets for Bettys and Nels, other than doing their regular bombing thing, has been uh, ships escaping from Manila. Um, and they're really at the very tip of that range. Um, and then the Hong Kong escapees. And honestly, these guys are low priority targets anyway, so it really doesn't matter if I get them or not. And then as far as Manila escapees, if there are any more escaping from there, we've got the Air HQ and the Bettys in Babel Doab. So, that's, so there's really no need um, to be able to have torpedo carrying capability in Takao right now. Uh, so that last M or that last Air HQ that's available is getting packed up and shift off to Bangkok. Um, I, I used the fastest ships I had available too just to try to get them there in a hurry because there's all this naval activity that just keeps going on at Rangoon and I want to put a stop to that um, as soon as I possibly can. Um, other than that up here we're continuing to hold at Lingayen. Um, we're close to having the 38th Division loaded up. Uh, they'll be departing Hong Kong soon, coming straight into Lingayen. Um, and I think once we've reinforced that, we'll be ready to make a push into Clark and see what it looks like. Um, I'd say on troop numbers, it's probably going to be pretty close, but something to th keep in mind with the Philippines is uh, the Philippine troops tend to have low morale, poor training. Uh, they don't fight very well. Um, and the number of American troops there is relatively limited. Um, so when we s see numbers like this, it's like, oh, they've got 73,000 troops. That looks really formidable. Um, but when you get down to it, it's probably a paper tiger. Um, plus, they have, you know, absolutely no... Um, well, maybe not absolutely none, but they're they're losing the air war, uh, is what I'm trying to get at here. Um, I'm going to continue to have air supremacy over the base. Um, 
their numbers are going to continue to decline. You can see that the airfield itself here at Clark is already up to 44% damage. Uh, that's going to keep getting worse. Um, it's especially going to get worse after Manila falls because then they're going to not have any source of supply anymore. Uh, and as their supplies fall, uh, it's just going to get uglier and uglier for them. Um, so we're, we're kind of reaching the uh, end phase of the, um, the Luzon campaign. At the very least, um, I'd say we should be able to confine and render Clark useless um, no more than two more weeks. Um, maybe as little as one week. Uh, whether we actually push them into the Bataan Peninsula, I don't really care. As long as we can render Clark um, incapable of flying aircraft, we've accomplished most of our strategic objective. Um, submarine issues. So the number of submarines detected here is now up to nine. Um, so I have a Kaibo Khan, um, a first-rate sub-chaser, and two second-rate sub-chasers that are in or about to enter that hex. I've dispatched a pair of frontline destroyers. Um, I think they're coming from Cameron Bay. Uh, those have Mod 2 depth charges, so they'll be able to actually effectively get after these guys. And I'm now up to three aircraft squadrons um, acting for ASW. One uh, here out of Yokosuka, another one at uh, Hamamatsu, and the other from Nagoya. ASW training is an issue. We don't really have that many ASW proficient pilots, but I'm um, doing the best we can uh, this early in the war. Um, during the post-turn analysis, I mentioned that I had reserve subs to go after these guys, and I am sending one of my reserve submarines after them. Um, and that's probably going to be all I'm going to do. Um, they're just destroyers. They're on fire. They're out of fuel. Um, the only way they can s be saved is if he gets another ship here to refuel them. Um, so there's really no rush. Carrier Division 1 has received orders to take station off Rabaul. Uh, one of my Kate squadrons is going to bomb the airfield. Um, hopefully we'll be keeping them off balance. If we draw an airstrike, that's fine. Uh, we got zeros to deal with it, which is something that a lot of the surface traffic that has been in the area has not had. Um, in addition, our amphibious group from truck is ready to go, carrying one-third of the 4th Division plus two marine units. Um, this really should put us over the top. And when they get here, they'll have Carrier Division 1 protecting them from airstrikes, and Carrier Division 1 will continue to basically provide close air support by dropping some bombs on either the enemy airfield or the enemy soldiers um, to provide support for that landing. And we also have the um, three light cruisers um, within this task force now. Uh, they're armed back up. Uh, they're a little bit damaged, uh, but nothing serious. Uh, still capable of uh, 28 knots at the lowest. So we, we have what we need. Um, so the drama around Rabaul will hopefully be over. Um, the battleships that are here have been ordered to f form up, um, you know, since this task force in particular, uh, with the single destroyer, was supposed to rendezvous with the heavy cruiser group over here, but that didn't happen. And then this pair of destroyers was supposed to go straight to Babel and then to Truck, um, but they were too busy reacting to everything else that was going on around them, so that didn't happen. So I'm just having both of these groups of battleships uh, form up. They'll meet at Babel. Um, I believe I have 
an ammunition ship here. Yes, um, so they're going to meet with the ammunition tender, hopefully get loaded back up, and then one or both of those groups can head to truck from there um, for further my, uh, naval fire support assignments as needed, um, assuming any are needed. It's not clear that's going to be the case. Now, over here by the Torres Strait, uh, we have these two ships moving east. I strongly suspect that these are cruisers. Um, one thing that the, the game sort of gives away sometimes is that your AI commanders sometimes know more than you do. And what I had started to do was split off the cruisers from this group so that they could basically provide something like a covering force that could scout out ahead, um, meet these uh, unknown contacts before they reached my carrier battle group, and if you know it was an enemy force, they could go ahead and sink them. And when I did that, uh, the AI captains plotted a course that avoided the enemy ships. So I'm like, oh, you think these guys are somebody you need to be scared of? <laughs> um, so since this is apparently such an intimidating force, I've just asked Division Three to back off. Um, this should be far enough to let this task force come through and make their turn right in front of us. Um, so when that happens, we will track them and launch an airstrike. Or so I hope. I mean, I, I don't know how many times I expect to have airstrikes and then it doesn't happen, but that's the plan. All right, and uh, I think that's going to do it. So we'll uh, go ahead and close this out, and we'll see you in the combat replay. Combat replay for December 27th, 1941, now underway. Oof. Uh, guessing this is um, an aviation patrol tender that uh, got evicted from Ambon when we took it over. <laughs> Obliterated by direct hits. More escapees from Ambon. Don't engage because we're out of ammo. I think this is a supply run headed to Miri, or maybe leaving Miri after being completed. Heavy cruisers. Start this fight off right with a torpedo hit. So these are probably the least damaged enemy cruisers in the enemy formation. Left over from the American carrier battle group, I should say. Nice. Yeah, so two torpedo hits on Canberra, and she was already softened up a bit before this. But I think we've got her already. took a pretty good hit on us. Uh, it's a primary battery from Salt Lake City against Paguro.
Miyoko's finally getting into the fight now. Alright, not bad, not bad at all. Canberra goes down. Salt Lake City's taken three hits, although I don't think any of them was that bad, and uh, I think only one of these hits against Higuro was significant. This might be our amphibious group retreating. Yeah, or maybe not, they're pretty small. Uh, three PBs. This could be the um, construction engineers I'm sending to Ambon. Enemy submarines are pretty busy this turn. Looks like we got away with one. Um, so this is all destroyers. Um, led by the Sims. You know what? If, if memory serves, there's um, an arrival of Sims class destroyers that happens early in the game. And it's like seven ships. So that's probably what this is. Um, it's probably not an ASW task force that's specifically trying to find us. Just my guess. Unfortunately, we've got a lot of ASW ships, but not many, if any, that are here so far have depth charges that can reach the submarines here. So a lot of what we're doing is just suppression. Damn it. I think this Kaibo Khan might have been one of the ones with the deeper depth charges. we here. Right, Salt Lake City again. And it's uh, my task force with the Miyoko. So this is a rematch from earlier today. Apparently got torpedoes left over, but shooting them at 20,000 yards isn't likely to score any hits.
Alright, got a good hit on the enemy destroyer. There we go. Takes another hit. Okay, Salt Lake City's punishing her a bit. Ah, uh, there's another one through the belt armor. Salt Lake City is kicking Higuro's ass. And Ellen just pretty much sat both of these rounds out without taking much damage, but just took a very bad hit. Come on, Miyoko, get in the fight. Destroyer badly damaged. Come on, Miyoko. There we go. Yes! Alright. Belt armor penetrating hit on Salt Lake City. So Haguro has been hit four times, is now marked with heavy damage, uh, so that is uh, kind of a win for them, I guess. Uh, Yamikaze, yeah, also heavy damage. Salt Lake City's been hit three times, at least one of those was an armor penetrating hit, but heavy damage not reported. Um, heavy fires from the single hit on El Elit. Um, Drayton's been beaten up quite badly and will probably sink. Ellet just took a bomb hit from a Cade on patrol. Got reports of air missions canceled on around Clark. Mm -hmm. 
This guy should be carrying torpedoes. Oh, nice. Uh, so that's a um, aviation tending destroyer. Just took a hit. Heavy damage. Betty's flying out of Luzon. Get a hit. I did transfer, like, I think nine Betty's, a detachment, um, over from Takao to Luzon because the Air HQ in Luzon was departing. Uh, so these guys still have their torpedoes. Uh. So this is all wrong. Uh, the zeros are not assigned to escort the Sallies. They're assigned to escort Nels. Um, the aircraft that were assigned to escort the Sallies were Oscars, and they're not here. Um, so we're basically leading a bunch of Sallies into slaughter, because there weren't enough zeros to do this. So it looks like I'm, what I'm going to have to do is suspend bomber operations for a little bit and just focus on sweeps. Because um, this... I mean, this is two turns in a row now that a small fraction of the escorting fighters that were assigned have actually flown the mission they were given. We're taking heavy bomber casualties because of that. But Eleven Sally's shot down. So I shot down one buffalo, and all that just for two runway hits. Uh, lost three zeros, 13 sallies. We got an Oscar sweep. Yep. So the Oscar one Charlies are assigned for sweep missions, while the one Bravos and Bait Bravos are um, one Alphas and one Bravos are assigned to escort duty. So hey, at least they're getting a lot of rest. All the Charlies are doing the heavy lifting.
Uh, that was the only plane we lost on that engagement right there at the end. Uh, six Buffaloes and three H-81s down. Well, I did split the um, the Oscars between escorting the Lilies and escorting the Sallies, so maybe, uh, yeah, it would have made sense that the 1As would have been with the Lilies and the 1Bs with the, uh, with the Sallies, so it looks like, other than pulling zero escorts, this one is working as it should. through to the bombers. Six lilies, maybe seven. Yeah, so we got one enemy fighter in that. Plus one enemy fighter destroyed on the ground. Uh, so, 12 runway hits with six lilies shot down. That probably wasn't worth it. Well, we seem to have solved our SPD problem at Rabaul. Uh, says this is a morning air attack on my Zuru S... Oh, okay, okay. So, it's a close air support mission being flown by the SPDs at Rabaul. Um, and Carrier Division 1 is close enough that it was able to provide Zeros to turn that strike away. Unfortunately, zeros really aren't good enough to turn away B-17s. Alright, we actually got one.
Nope. You know, one shot down, two get through, I'll take it. I'm happy whenever a B-17 goes down. Damn. Well, the KB wasn't able to help with this one. Gonna need to set up a long range cap to make sure we get consistent coverage there. Well, in spite of the day's earlier escort mess-ups, uh, this group of Nels does have zero escorts, as they should. Probably not as many. Um, went through the trouble of relocating a squadron to make sure they had more. Um, my zero escorts are getting absolutely manhandled by the AVG, though. Oh man, that was just embarrassing. Yeah, we had 5-0 shot down with no victories. It's a really bad day to be a Japanese bomber pilot today. Wow. All that for an AKL. All that for an attack on a light cargo ship. Uh, so we just lost five zeros and 13 nels, including the flak loss there at the end. Yeah, one zero made it back out of that whole flight, and that's it. And we shot down nothing. So that was a port attack, and we basically hit nothing. Ha ha, B-17's damaged on the ground. Why are they operating B-17's from Rabaul itself and not from Port Morrisby? Seems kind of reckless. Salt Lake City, you've been a pain in my ass. It'll be good to get rid of you. Well, if there's any doubt about whether the Drayton was going to survive, she's already sunk. Wow, we only sent 14 Vals on this strike? Well, at least it's enough to get heavy damage on the Salt Lake City. It was weak. Well, no strikes on the Enterprise in Lexington today, and I'm hoping the reason for that is because they're simply not around anymore. Uh, 
So despite having the depth charges we needed, we failed to get any hits on the Triton. Oh, damn. Alright, so that was the, um, the seaplane tender that was torpedoed at Wake a while ago. Um, it had been disbanded to port. Did not survive the fires. Alright, so we ended up with 1 to 1 odds. Fort level came down to 0. Uh, we took some casualties, but the enemy took the worst of it. So we're pulling ahead slowly here. This should be an easy win. Uh, or maybe not with a defensive bonus. Defender has some units in the wrong op mode. Hmm. So this might be a little bit of a slog. Um, the op mode probably means the enemy recently had units arrive to join the units already in this hex. Uh, so that's why it was not as uh, tilted as we expected it to be. Uh, that's fine. Maybe we'll get some air support to help put a push us over the top. Finishing off a weakened unit here. Another weakened unit. Can we finally get these enemy units out of Temelo? 16 to 1. Wow. Yeah, we can't seem to get these guys. We didn't destroy any squads. Just 33 squads disabled. At least we're making progress in Sarawak, Borneo. Take some casualties here. So the in the jungles outside Sangor and Patani. Yeah, we actually take more casualties than the enemy here. Of course we're kinda getting used to um getting pounded by these bombardments at Raval. Looks like this one's doing less damage than previous ones. And it looks like one of our units is retreating in Malaya. I'm not sure what that's all about. Just got a new unit arriving at Hong Kong. Let's see who that is. Aviation support. I'll take it. I'll take it. Alright, looking at the post-turn analysis, uh, this one wasn't that great. Um, still came out ahead in terms of victory point gain, but nowhere near as high as it could have been, especially with um, still one an enemy carrier that should be sinking that we don't yet have credit for. Um, enemy had significantly better day in the air than us. We can see the difference in points over here. Uh, little change in base points. Um, got a little bit of an uptick in army casualties, but not much. Um, really the reason we came out ahead this turn is uh, ship victory points. Uh, just looking at our losses, uh, you can see Sally Zeros and Nels uh, in particular, and I guess we'll include Lilies on that list. Really bad day for them. Um, also losing a significant number of Peets with the aviation tender sinking. 
I guess if I should have evacuated those planes from the ship. I didn't think I was going to lose that ship, though. I thought we had that fire under control. Um, for some reason, our Zeros just really got dominated by the AVG today. Um, really underscoring how much I need to refocus on on Singapore. I can't continue to do this... this um, basically a tactic of, of combining sweeps with um, airstrikes. Because um, the airstrikes either just don't happen, or if they do happen, they're, they're arriving after, uh, before the sweeps, and, you know, with a partial load of escorts. Um, so I need to focus on the sweeps for a while, get the um, opposition back down to where we've seen it like a week ago and then we can resume bombing. Um, yeah, there's really no way around it. Um, that said, it's not like the enemy didn't take losses at all today. Um, Eleven Dauntless is shot down. Five of these AVG P-40s shot down, including four Ops losses, which may be from battle damage. It might also be because we've damaged the airbase at Singapore to the point that operating aircraft out of it comes with a price. Um, and then you see we've also got nine buffaloes destroyed, including one blown up on the ground. So overall losses up 67 to 33. Uh, I mean, yeah, we got we got dominated pretty bad. Now, a total of 12 ground losses. Let's look into that again. Okay, yeah, um, eight Pete's four Jake's. So that's the, both of those are the aviation tender. So, lots of ships sunk for the Allies that were credited this turn, including the light cruiser Enterprise, heavy cruisers Canberra, and Salt Lake City. Um, so combined, that's like 100 victory points right there. Uh, we're also picking off a lot of um, seaplane patrol tenders in the Ambon area, along with a pair of cargo ships near Hong Kong. Um, la between turns uh, in the setup, I scuttled this ship. Um, this is the ship that had been damaged by a mine like probably two weeks ago. Uh, I thought I was going to be able to get it back to Hong Kong. Uh, they had a catastrophic loss of um, flooding control. Uh, I didn't see any way around it. The ship wasn't going to make it, and they were too far to turn back. And then, of course, we lost the uh, the ship off Wake that was torpedoed by a submarine probably three or four days ago. Thanks to the um, official reported sinking of the Enterprise, which, of course, we haven't confirmed, uh, we finally have our ship kill victory points above the enemies. Um, so that went over today. And just looking at the air losses really quick, you can just see the magnitude of the, the reversal of fortunes in the air thanks to all our bomber losses today. And this does appear to be the um, worst day for us in terms of losing aircraft ever in the campaign. And come to think of it, the Allies haven't even had as bad a day as us, unless you count the mulligan turn, uh, when two carriers were lost, and of course um, that got taken off the record, as you can see by the total number of aircraft shot down decreasing after the mulligan turns. Alright, well looking around the map, looks like we got away uh, with this unit over here not being attacked this turn. Um, they're still combat ineffective. Uh, 80 infantry squads out of 90 disabled. Uh, so they may realize that they have an opportunity here. Uh, units in contact south of Kukong. Uh, still in contact here. Um, all the reinforcements that I was going to be moving here have arrived. 
Uh, so we're now up to 787 AV, which I don't think is going to be enough to evict them, but at least for the foreseeable future, it should be enough to hold on. Uh, so I'm probably just going to keep bombing them for the time being. Um, yeah, I mean, there's... I guess they could start concentrating their forces if they want to move these guys in, too. Yeah, it's something I'll have to think about and set up, because... Um, we can't just let this concentration of forces keep going forever until they finally have enough to do something. Looks like we finally have pretty much all the enemy units out of what I've been calling the Riverlands. Uh, this guy still needs to be tracked down and destroyed, though maybe I don't need to be allocating a whole division to doing that. I could find something smaller to do it with. I know I've got some Marine SNLFs. Heck, that might be this guy. Yeah, Naval Guard SNLF, basically the same thing. Um, so, yeah, these guys can switch assignments. So, free up another division to get up to this front line, since that actually matters. So, this is a little bit interesting. Apparently, four units trying to cross the river into the mountains. Uh, something to keep an eye on. I don't... I'm not interested in joining him in the mountains. Uh, if he wants to come to one of my bases and fight there, we can do that. So we're pushing these guys down the roads. Um, I guess they're still resisting pretty well, because we haven't gotten either of them to surrender. Recently unpacked tank regiments has arrived there. Hmm. Alright. Our submarine missed an opportunity to sink some of these ships coming out of Rangoon. Total enemy forces is steady at 23,000 according to Recon. So hopefully no reinforcements just yet. Unloading, still proceeding at Bangkok. Okay, um... So we've caught up with these retreating units. Hopefully we can uh, freeze them in place so they don't run again. These guys keep moving away from us. Uh, so we fought the enemy here at this hex and didn't really make that much headway. Oh, uh, we've got additional troops ready to arrive. Uh, so they'll be there soon. Or at least the armored cars will. The infantry will take a while longer. I... Alright, so I think this is the unit that was reporting to be retreating. Yeah, I don't know why. We're not quite at full strength, possibly indicating casualties. I mean, they're here with an armored car unit. It's not like they're left unprotected and alone. Uh, so, we have six aircraft left in a squadron of 27. 
How's that for losses? Um, I could just convert them to uh, the 1C version of Sally's. Yeah, it's allowable. Um, before I do that, I guess this is more setup than uh, post analysis. The range is the same, so I can do that without too much of a concern. Three enemy cruisers and a battleship reported in Singapore Harbor, uh, along with task forces including merchants, including the AKL. We tried to attack and lost more planes. So the Nell Squadron here. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how much it's supposed to be, um, but it's more than 16, that's for sure. It looks like most of the enemy fighters are operating out of Johor right now anyways. Um, so my bombing raids on Singapore weren't going to hurt them. Might actually be worth switching targets when I resume bombing anyways, just because 40 aircraft in an airbase of size 4 is a lot more crowded than 40 aircraft in a size 6. So we'll get more kills on the ground faster hitting Johore. Probably, uh... Hmm... Terrain's equal, but I think fortifications help, too. And Johor is not going to have anywhere near as much forts as Singapore will. Twenty-first Division has arrived at Singora. Hmm... So I could either leave them there or have them advance down that rail trail to try to pick up the pace over here. Um, I think not. Um, so the Imperial Guards is 10 miles away from getting into Alor's Star. If we just be patient and wait for that to happen, um, then that's going to open up this rail line at least to Taiping, if not to Kuala Lumpur in a few more days. Still plenty of targets in Palembang port to hit. Still very little defense believed to be at Palembang. Only one submarine spotted off the Mindano coast. Um, I relocated the Jakes over to here. And they are patrolling four submarines off the coast, so... If they were still there, hopefully we'd be seeing them. And I'm not sure why there's at least an enemy AKL here. Um, they may be trying to evacuate or land troops. It sounds like I could interrupt that a bit with this. Why not? Have surface forces in the area for a reason, right? Oh, who are all these guys? Lots of traffic. Lots of traffic. So I guess it's possible that the enemy carriers disbanded into Loughton, most likely, since that's where they were detected. Um, so probably allocate an airstrike to them. Clearly I want to keep hitting anyone that's at sea. Uh, so this is going to be my damaged heavy cruiser. Let's see how bad the damage is. Um, well, at least the fires are pretty much out. 
Um, Yamakaze with 61 system damage. That's at risk of this damage getting worse because the system damage is so high. And same story with Haguro, really. Um, flood damage of 41 is pretty bad, so need to get them out. Still got enemy subs hanging off Babel. Four of them in that one axe. Speaking of which, how are we doing off Japan? Five, six submarines sighted. And we ran one of our sub chasers out of ammo. It wasn't this one. This Kaibo Khan's just about out of ammo. Now, all I can say is I just hope our aircraft start doing something, because I don't have a lot of faith in these ships being able to hit them. Um, what about the destroyers we sent? I don't see them. They did have some distance to travel. Now we're going to stop in Naha for fuel. Oh, they're still way back here. <sighs> yeah, they didn't make it very far. Still got the enemy destroyers here, although it looks like they're turning around, moving southwest instead of east. Fourth Division's on the way. They've got 11 hexes to go to get to Rebel. They're traveling six a day, so two days. Plenty of time for the KB to slide around to the other side of here, if they even need to. Now nah, we can probably do just fine from over here. Not really the KB anymore, it's just uh, Carrier Division 1. Um, Uh, speaking of not getting airstrikes, uh, so this group of enemy ships that kind of intimidated our heavy cruisers within Carrier Division 3, um, they were detected again, but we didn't launch an airstrike. Maybe I should give the cruisers another chance. Alright, I think that's just about all we need to talk about. Did get a detection out here, but it's not classified. Yeah, we're not really seeing any of the expected traffic along the um, southern supply routes. Not sure why that is. Maybe they're just heading up here. We're just too far south. In any case, um, gonna make some adjustments, and uh, we'll see you for the 28th. And hopefully, uh, the 28th is a better turn because this was not a good one. Thanks for watching.